Assalamualaikum, my name is Widi Mutakin, founder of Expo Studio, Expo Academy, and also Edu Talenta. In this video tutorial, I want to discuss how to model a classic style pillar or column using Blender version 4.3. For this tutorial, we will start from a cylinder object. So let's just delete the default cube object. Press Shift A and type seal, then enter. We want to create a center column that has 16 capsule-like holes. We will build each capsule hole from two faces. So in total, we need 32 segments or vertices along the side of the cylinder. It just so happens that the default number of vertices is 32. So we don't need to change it. For the column diameter, we want it to be 40 centimeters. So we set the radius at 20 centimeters. As for the height, let's make it 3 meters. Okay. Now we only want to focus on the two faces in front. So we can delete the others for now. Select these two faces, then press I for inset. Make it about this deep. Next, we want to use vertex bevel to make the corners curved. For now, we should avoid having too many edges. For that, we can select these two faces, then press F, and select these two faces, and press F. Next, go to vertex mode. Select these two vertices, then press Shift Ctrl B. I think four segments are enough because the size is not too big. To remove any double vertices, we can press A, then M and select by distance. You can see two vertices getting merged. If you are done, select the two faces in the center. Press I for inset. Approximately this far. Then press G to move, then Y, then push these faces back a little. Go to H mode. Subtract the center edge from the selection. Then press Ctrl B to bevel. I think two segments are enough. Next, we can go to face mode. Select these two faces. Press Ctrl plus several times. Now, to select only the edges that are on the border of the current selection, we can open the select menu. Choose select loops. Then choose select boundary loops. After the edges are selected, we can bevel them just like the edge loop in the middle. Before we continue, it's a good idea to select all edges that are outside and also inside of the curves. And then take them as sharp. Next, we can go to vertex mode, select the vertex in its corner, and one on the vertices in a curve area. Then press J to create a new edge connecting the two. Do the same for the vertices on the right side. The goal is to make the mesh structure more stable for the next steps. After that, we can change the shading mode to auto mode. And this is the result so far. To make the bottom part exactly the same as the top part, we can use the mirror modifier. Turn off all axes except the z-axis. Enable the bisect option to avoid double vertices. If you are done, you can first apply the mirror modifier. Then go to vertex mode, make sure all the vertices are selected, and then use the tool called spin. In our case, since we don't have a two-dimensional profile, but a three-dimensional mesh element, we should use the use duplicates option. Remember, we want a total of 16 parts, with a rotation of 360 degrees. So, this is what the result looks like. Keep in mind that if we use the duplicates option with a full circle rotation, we will usually end up with one extra part. We can drag this part or just delete it right away. Another drawback of the duplicates method is the presence of double vertices. So, usually we need to press A, then M, then select by distance. You can see that a lot of vertices were merged. So, this is what the model looks like so far. 
Now, for the head or the top part, let's say we are a bit lazy to create the profile manually. In such a case, we can use the bevel command with the cornice molding preset like the previous video tutorial when we made an arch molding. As the base object, we can use a cylinder again. Change the depth to 40. Then the radius value to 35. As for the number of segments, we can make it 64 vertices. Move this new object up and then snap it to the top of the middle column. Make sure all the scales are at default or 1. Select the edge loop at the bottom. Then press Ctrl B for bevel. Change the profile type to custom and select the cornice molding preset. Usually for cornice molding, I use a minimum of 24 segments. I am using 26 for now. Then we can go to face mode and push this top face down. And this is the result. I think I want to scale everything a bit in the z-axis direction. And also for the middle column, I think it will look better if you select all the vertices at the top, then pull them all up a bit. Let's snap the top part to the middle part. And finally, we can change the shading mode to auto smooth. Okay. For the bottom or the leg part of the column, we want to create a custom profile. We will be using the vertex extrude technique and then use the spin command to rotate it and make it three dimensional. You should note that I will create one vertex in the scene using the official Blender add on called Extra Mesh Objects. And I have to sign a custom shortcut for this, which is the letter V. Basically, every time I press V on my keyboard, Blender will create a single vertex at the 3D cursor location. I need to explain this so that you don't get confused about why there are suddenly one vertex on a screen. I want the diameter of the foot to be about 80 centimeters. We can rely on the grid for rough measurement. So we position the vertex approximately here. Then we want the height to be around 30 centimeters. Next, we are going to build the profile using mainly vertex extrusions. So press E, then press Z so that it is straight vertically. Press E and X to make it horizontal. Then E and Z again. Then E and X again to make it straight to the left. After that, we can press E and position the new vertex freely. In this process, it is a good idea to use a reference so that the profile is more in line with the pillar product you want to use. Select these two vertices and snap them to the above part. Okay. Now that we have a basic profile, it is time to convert the center vertex to a curve. Use the vertex bevel command or shift control B to do so. By default, the bevel command uses the last setting. We need to change the profile type to circular again. And for this curve, 8 segments should be enough. Next, we can set the width. Now, if the slider moves too fast, you can hold shift to make the changes slower or more precise. Then, select this vertex, press shift control B as before. But now, we only use about 3 or 4 segments. If you are still not satisfied, feel free to tweak the vertices until you like how it looks. Next, we can select all the vertices in the sharp corners. And then bevel them using one segment so that later they don't look too sharp. Okay. After that, select all the vertices. Then use the spin tool. Remember that the spin tool uses the 3D cursor position as the center of its rotation. We can rotate it just a little to trigger it. Then we can revise the parameters. For the number of steps, we use 64 so that the result looks smooth. And for the angle value, we set this to 360 so it spins a full circle. 
the auto merge option will make the vertices at the ends automatically merge. Next, we can select the edge loop at the bottom. Then press F to patch it with a new face. One thing you need to pay attention to when building a profile with vertex extrusions is that the resulting faces can have flipped normals. So you should always select all the faces and then press Shift N so all normals are facing outwards. Finally, we can set the shading type to auto smooth. So it is how you create a custom profile using vertex extrusions, bevel, and also spin. Inshallah, with this technique, you can create other profile shapes that you want. If you want to learn 3D in more detail or other computer graphics software, don't forget to check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare. The links are in the description below. Thank you for watching. Wassalamualaikum.